everyone our today's question is meeting rooms too this is a very very popular question amongst companies like amazon bloomberg facebook google apple microsoft and so on right now so the question says given an array of meeting time intervals consisting of start and end times uh, find the minimum number of conference rooms required that means that we are given a particular set of intervals for which is the start and the end time of each meeting and we have to find out that if all of these meetings were to happen, how many conference rooms, which is the minimum, would be required to conduct these meetings? It means that if there are two meetings which are occurring at the same time, we need two meeting rooms at that particular point in time for them to happen. So we have to find the minimum number of conference rooms that's required for all the intervals. Okay, so for example here, 0, 30, 5, 10, and 15, 20. As we can see that 5, 10 and 15, 20 are pretty much non-intersecting. That is, they can be held in the same meeting room. But 0, 30 is a meeting that is going, uh, basically having an overlap with, with, in this case, both of these meetings. So this will need an entirely separate meeting room for it to occur. So that's why we need total two meeting rooms here. And the second example has two intervals which are completely non-overlapping and that's why we need just one meeting room for them to happen. Okay, I hope the question is clear. So as mentioned in my previous video about um, meeting rooms, we do have one thing to keep in mind whenever there is a question about intervals, that is, is the input sorted? If not, you can either sort it on start time or the end time. Some questions work well with both of them. Some questions need a specific start or the end time approach to be able to solve them. So always consider all these options whenever looking at any interval problem. The next thing to remember here, for example, in this case is that even after, for example, you sort it on the start time, um, you would always need to know which meeting ended the very first. So if there are five meetings that have already happened till now, which meeting ended the very first? Because there is a probability, for example, in this case, uh, the earliest meeting that's starting is at zero, but it ends at 30. Whereas we have another meeting that starts at five, which is later than zero, but ends earlier, which is 10. So when we are considering 15,20 and trying to find out if, if this needs a new meeting room or not, we should not compare it with the end time of 0, 30. Rather, we should be able to compare it with the end time of 5,10. And that will tell us that there is one meeting room that is occupied, but it will be freed by the time this one starts. So I do not want to add a new meeting room to my answer. Right? Okay. So uh, in order to be able to do that, we also need to keep the processed intervals sorted in the order of the ending time of the interval. Okay, so first of all, we will sort, sort this entire input on the start time of the intervals. And then in order to have these uh, processed elements sorted on their end time, we will use a priority queue because that's what is uh, the best use case for, for a priority queue, that is uh, a heap, to keep whatever elements it has at hand sorted in a specific order that is specified. So we can use priority queue there. And then whenever we are bringing in a new interval, we compare it with the meeting that is ending the first. If there is no intersection, we can just reuse that rule. Otherwise, we'll need a new meeting room and we just add that interval to the priority queue. So it's going to be very simple once the implementation is done. I hope you understand the approach. So let's get started. Some base conditions first. Okay, so if the intervals equals to equals to null or intervals dot length equals to equals to zero we need no meeting rooms so we return a zero okay the next is to quickly have this sorted intervals sorted on okay so let's have a new comparator 
that will take integer array objects. Yeah. And we will say, sorry, compare. Okay, B. And just sort this on the starting time. So just return A of 0 minus B of 0. Oh, makes sense. Okay, now we also need a priority queue. Priority queue. Yeah. Uh, and, and in this, we would again need to override the comparator, which is obviously of the same type. Okay. Now we have public int compare int a int b. Yeah. And here we want to return. Uh, basically, the priority queue should have at the top the meeting room that's ending the very first. Uh, sorry, the meeting that's ending the very first. So we make use of the end time to uh, keep this sorted. Okay, fine. So we have the priority queue and we have the intervals sorted. To priority queue, we just add the very first one that is intervals of 0 okay and now we start from i equals to 1 okay. yeah so now let's get the current which is intervals of i okay and this is an array sorry yeah and the previous one we can just pull so previous represents the meeting room that ends the very uh, the meeting that ends the earliest right so yeah okay now if if the current starting time is less than, right, is less than previous's end time, then we know that there is an intersection. So if the current meeting is starting, um, yeah, is starting at a time earlier than the time at which the previous meeting ended, okay, then there is an intersection and we can just uh, add both of them to the priority queue because we cannot create an intersection yeah because we would need like two two meet meeting rooms for both of them so we just add otherwise Yeah, so now otherwise I can reuse the meeting room which uh, which is being used by the meeting previous, okay? So what I need to do is that I just need to say that previous's end time should be equal to current's end time because now that meeting room would be occupied for this current meeting till it ends. So we just update that and we again just push this one into the priority queue. Yeah. Okay. So for example, for 5 comma 10 and 15 comma 20, we would see that 15 is less than, uh, is greater than 10, right? So we will just update this interval's end time to 20 and be done with that.
All right, and we just have to at the end return the size of the priority queue, which represents the number of meeting rooms required to conduct all these meetings. Okay, uh, let's see if that works. Mm -hmm. That does work. Um, the time complexity for the solution, uh, if just considering the priority queue part, would be different. But since we anyways have to sort the uh, entire intervals array, uh, this will become n log n. And because we're using a priority queue to store all the intervals, the space complexity also becomes O of n. So I hope you like this solution and you find this helpful. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. Keep coding and take care, guys.